secret number one is what equipment do I need? What computer, what sequencer, gear, plugins, libraries. And this used to be the first thing that I taught in this class, but not anymore. We're gonna talk about this at the end, the questions at the end of the class. And the reason is, it doesn't really matter what equipment you use if you don't know how to use it. It doesn't matter what libraries you've got if you don't know how to orchestrate. It doesn't matter what plugins you have if you don't know how to mix it. If you don't know how to place the instruments, if you don't know how to balance, it doesn't really matter what EQ or what reverb we are using. All right, so the new secret number one is use at least two MIDI CCs at the same time, not just one. So when we wanna make our instruments sound alive, we're gonna use modulation, right? To do dynamics. And that's fine and good, but add also at least expression with modulation, both of them at the same time, to add an extra layer of dynamics to your sound. Right? And sometimes we can even add more things, like for example, for strings, we can have a third that controls vibrato, uh, or maybe a fourth that controls the position of the bow, like from sul ponticello to sul tasto. Now you don't need to go crazy and having 20 different MIDI CCs controlling different aspects of your instrument is gonna make things too complicated, but understand that the more you do, the more realistic your music is gonna sound. Now, these are my top five dynamic moves. The first dynamics move is very simple. I call it the Lord of the Rings, and it's very useful useful for like slow homophonic strings chords and it goes like this you're gonna use two midi CCs at the same time modulation and expression and it's gonna go up and down every two chords up the first chord down the second chord and the trick is the a little step or drop in between chords it goes like this The second one is called the double push. Works great for final crescendos. You're gonna use expression and modulation. And there's gonna be a first push to sort of like the middle, then back up a little bit and then go back up. You're gonna end first with expression and then bring up till the end modulation. And it sounds like this. And in a real life example, First push gives the esforzato to that note, and depending how fast or slow, you're gonna give it more or less character. And the second one adds the crescendo till the end, adding first volume and then ending with modulation for aggression. The next two moves are for melodies. Here's how a musician interprets a melody. They're gonna add a little bit of weight at the beginning of each note, and then a little bit of decay, depending on the length of the note, the longer, the slower the decay. So watch me do it and see if you notice something. If you notice, there are a few things. First, at the beginning of each note, there's a little bit of a drop. That helps connect the notes and gives it realism. Second, at the beginning of each note, there's always sort of like a small crescendo for shadow type of thing that adds character and weight to the note. And then the longer the note, there's always a slow decay. What you are seeing here is this one is expression, so it's basically the patch volume. This one here is modulation, so it's characters, dynamics. And then finally here, this is number two breath control. This controls vibrato. So as you see at the beginning, I add volume, dynamics, and vibrato. And then this patch in particular allows me to control the attack of the note. So with number nine here, I can overlay either sforzato, marcato, staccato, spiccato. So this is what I've done here at the end. I added a staccato, and then here, even using a legato patch, I added these staccato notes at the end. And then the next move is sometimes within a melody, there's a note repetition. So for example, if it's piano, harp, celesta, guitar, it's easy, just repeat the note and that's it, right? But there are other instruments like flutes, trumpets, strings, that when they repeat a note, it's somehow connected and they, they can connect it more or less, more separation, more connection, right? There are some libraries that if you repeat that note real quick, they are gonna trigger that connection between notes. But if you don't have one of those libraries and you want more control, here's how you're gonna do it.
Notice this drop here in expression modulation, and I added vibrato as well, but with expression modulation will do it. It does the tom, tom, tom. So it's two notes, but I didn't actually repeat the note. Because the problem with legato patches is that the first note of the melody always has a slower attack. And if you don't have one of those libraries that allow you to do bow changes or repeated notes, it's gonna sound fake. It's gonna sound like this. And finally, long sustained notes. Don't just do that. This is a high pitched, long sustained violin note. And as you can notice, expression, modulation, a little bit of vibrato going up, and that's it. Create movement. The way this is gonna work is you're gonna do subtle, quick moves with expression, modulation, and then slower, bigger moves with vibrato if you've got control over vibrato. Something like this. and then vibrato on top. And this sounds way better than this. So before we move on, I wanted to stress how important this is. This is where music gets created. Yes, the idea originates in our head. But the same idea is going to sound very different if an amateur high school orchestra performs it or a professional orchestra. It's going to sound way better with a professional orchestra. This is the same. So use the best libraries that you can afford and then get the most out of them. Practice and make them sound as good as you can. 